You're still watching where is now 2021, the ultimate year of the I am and I will campaign. Shows us that our actions have an impact on everyone around us within our neighborhoods, communities, and cities. And that more than ever before, our actions are also being felt across borders and ocean. Now, this year is a reminder of enduring power, of cooperation and collective action. When we choose to come together, we can achieve what we all wish for, a healthier, brighter world without cancer. So together, all of our actions matter this World Cancer Day. Who are you and what will you do about cancer? Okay. Yeah, so. Oh, I was really hoping you were not going to talk about World Cancer Day today. Why? I always run from that conversation. Why? I don't, I don't like to hear it. Why? I've lost so many people to cancer that I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. And you know the funny thing? I've seen people who were very, very health conscious die from Cancer, due to cancer. Yeah. So I am just so scared. That can you, know, they can say you ever that be so cancer, careful? Most of the cancers are actually um, the death, right? It's actually preventable if it's detected early. Most of it cannot be de most of it don't get detected early enough. Like can uh, cancer of the pancreas. Hmm. My uncle had it and in two months ooh, I saw it, they didn't tell me. The doctors gave him the date he was going to die. My God. We thought they didn't know what they were saying. Come and see church, pastors and all that. I prayed like I never prayed before. Do you know he died on that day? Wow. Hmm. Wow. Yes. Cancer of the pancreas? Hmm. Well, we just need to keep the awareness going, honestly speaking, because I know that there are some that are preventable. They, yeah, yeah, but some so get to an advanced stage before they before start they giving detected, you symptoms. Before they detect it, yeah. So it's sad, so sad. sad. Yeah. Uti, do you have any cancer story for us? So we just Please, move on to what's found in the um, Yeah, well, I mean, I had, I have the ultimate cancer story, if I can put it that. I mean, my mom died of cancer. It wow. was probably one of the most dramatic experiences of my life. Cancer is a weird one because, you know, you find people. So I was listening to Lamy saying that, you know, he died on the date that he gave. Cancer is just as much physical as it is mental. And the people that I've met, cancer survivors, it's almost a, a decision, right? Not to allow it to take them versus mm. you find, you know, one of the things I noticed in the UK, you find 80 year olds, 70 year olds with dementia who live with cancer for 10, 20 years, you know? So there's this argument that says people die from cancer because they give up. I mean, with my mom, she actually said she was going to stop fighting. You know, one of the downsides of being in the medical profession is you kind of know, mm. you've seen so many people go through it. You also know that her concern was she didn't want to be a burden to her children. Mm. So she actually survived the first time. It was in her lymph nodes. We had, she had surgery. It was taken out. She went into remission. She was fine for a couple more years. And then when it came back in her liver, she didn't tell us. Um, mm. But being that she was, had been a nurse, she knew how severe the, the cancer of the liver was. And she just didn't fight it. She hmm. was adamant that she wanted to come back to Nigeria. She um, just died and she did. And then a couple of months later, she passed. So it's, I mean, cancer is horrible. When you see what it turns people into, it turns them into shells of themselves. They become almost unrecognizable. I'm telling you. Um, Absolutely. And I, I just, for a disease that, like Lamy said, there's a lot of pre preventable um, versions of this disease. Everybody just has to do their bit. Hmm. Um, the I Am and I, I Will campaign is such a powerful one. And we all can do so much to improve um, cancer and the way it's ravaging the world. Because it's become more predominant. The big C used to be one of those things that older people got when we were younger. Yeah. Now, people in their younger, 20s are dying of cancer. Babies people have been diagnosed of cancer. Babies have cancer. That's so, what I told my you know, we're finding that what the foods we consume, the air is more, um, there's more pollution in the air. Everything has changed. Yeah. And, you know, we have to make conscious efforts to, to be healthier. Absolutely. All right, Uti, quickly, ha, huh? we've taken up our time. So quickly, tell us what you found in the news. Um, so my, my story is actually two stories in one. Um, the first headline, they're sort of piggybacking back, back to back. The first headline said um, IGP Adamu to, um, to step down, I believe, of this step down or handover. Um, and that story was speaking to the fact that the IGP of police had served his 35 years on the force and was due to go into retirement on February 1st, uh, 2021, which I believe was Monday. Um, but he had said that he could not step down uh, without the sign-off of the president, which I believe was, the first story says it was given on Tuesday. And that story was even positing who his replacement would be.
But earlier today, uh, then the announcement was made that his tenure had been extended by three months uh, to allow for the handover um, process. Uh, in my mind, he's been in the service for 35 years. It doesn't just creep up on you. You can't tell me that there's no succession planning. We don't know who's going to be the new IGP. How many DIGs do we have? How many AIGs do we have in service? You know, we have to think about how many years of service they've got to go, four years, five years, nine years. So many people fall into those buckets. The government could have done this better. Considering how controversial this, uh, this IGP has been, the things that have happened in the last six months um, mm -hmm. under his watch, I think that the government could have taken steps to ensure that succession was clearly planned mm -hmm. rather than now extending his tenure by three months to say mm -hmm. that this is what is going to happen. So, yeah. That's my story. That yeah, story. quickly. All right. So, yeah, you wanted to do a, yeah, a <laughs> contribution. Uti, in as much as I agree with you with um, the fact that um, this is not coming as a surprise, they had all the time in the world to have planned for a succession. I think it's more political, and I'll tell you why. You know, after the um, service chiefs were changed and the southern east, um, sorry, the southeast people were, they felt so changed, they started clamoring for the position of the IGP. Mm. And definitely, I am very sure the presidency had no plan mm. of giving it to the IGP, sorry, to the South Southeast. East. So what they are trying to do is, probably they were going to hand over, he was going to hand over to another northerner. Mm. Now the policy is a bit heated. If they do that at this point, the whole thing would just blow up in your faces. Yes. It's, it's so they just want a moment of calm. You know, we people now, in another one month, will, they will distract us with another story. And in another three months, trust me, he's going to hand over to another northerner. They have no plan whatsoever to hand it over to, to anybody To else. somebody outside of or the northern. that geopolitical zone. Wow. So this is just to distract us. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll they can't tell me they don't know who they want to. We, we won't be distracted. All right, so my story is actually um, a quick one. I just wanted to mention it. I found it very amusing. So it says, um, it says sorry, it says President Muhammadu Buhari has nominated... Um, Oloni, Sanki, Buratai, other ser former service chiefs as ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just smiling. And you know, ah! the, because we've run out of time, let me just read the tail end. Mm. The president urged the Senate to give expedi expeditious, expeditious consideration to the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I hear about hey. this ambass ambassadorial role, it gives them some level of immunity. You know, if, for instance, the IC, um, International Criminal oh. Court wants to, you know, probe certain things that have happened so on their clothing day of... You know, it's almost like a clothing. So tell me. And the reason I'm even taking this story is, is because of what we're having, the conversation we're having today, yeah. you know. But what do you think about the ambassadorial nomination? Well, you know the problem in Nigeria? That's why we have, a, we have weak institutions and weak leaders. Mm. Because most of these people that find themselves in position of authority never planned for it. Mm. They just found themselves. These people were settling. They were they already retired. Mm. And their, their mindset is just to retire in their home state or something. Mm. And suddenly this position is trust on them. Mm. In what a military, military man suddenly from retirement, supposedly, to ambassadorial ambassadorial role. <laughs> we don't understand. I, we should be on Netflix, like people say. Ah, Netflix this country Nigeria. is a joke. Drama. Honestly, and I'm sure we <laughs> no, do. Not a joke. Uh, we do respect to the president, mm. to the office of the president, not to the president, to his office. I think something is wrong with the president. His will. His mental state should, should be, be questioned. Should yes, be Uti. he doesn't look like he's in tune with what is happening at all. I don't think so. Uti, you want to come in quickly? Yeah. One, one second. No, I mean, um, hmm. well, uh, let me, giving you an ambassadorial position is the government's version of going home to your hometown to <laughs> retire. It's, it's a cushy job. It's, it's um, what, what, what I call it, it's diplomatic. You go there, you go for meetings, you host parties, you host guests. It doesn't get any more cushy than that to, to be a diplomat, right? They, do, they don't do anything. Right? They, they don't get to do anything. anything. Well, okay. there you go. So, How is that any different from going to sit in your village except, you know, having more money and having more Absolutely. Fun? So we'll take a break. Today's our ladies' night out. So we're going to be having a conversation around um, leadership, right? You know, creating weak leaders, creating weak systems and all of that. Um, but we'll take a break. When we return, we'll have that conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.